Hello everyone, Stratosmir here. Welcome to my first YouTube channel video. Um, I'm mainly a Twitch streamer, so bear with me as editing and recording are not my forte. Welcome! Welcome to the start of the Eel Dragon. How did this gorgeous creature come to be? Well, let me answer that for you. This project was started on May of 2022 with the goal of entering a Dragon Shield art contest. I believe the theme was draw slash paint an ocean dragon. Since I find eels quite tasty, yum yum yum, and interesting, I decided to base it on that, but it will also be a challenge since I do not think there's another one like it. Could be wrong, so don't take my word for granted. Back then, the goal was to finish the project within two weeks before the deadline, for that is when the ad showed up. Look, not the best with deadlines, but trying to get better. There's always room for improvement. It was quite a tight deadline to pursue, but went for it anyways because even if it wasn't finished in time, I would still have an amazing dragon in my collection. But look how awesome it came out! Super proud of it even though there were many moments of doubts and times when I truly thought it was a disaster reaching a point of no return, but thankfully I was mistaken. But let's go to the beginning. What is the easiest way to visualize anything but a few simple lines, like a stick figure to be exact? It gives so much freedom for quick poses without pondering if the pose is accurate, no perfection needed at this point. Thankfully, I had been practicing how to do many quick sketches in order to not care and linger on unnecessary details. Thank you, professors, for inhibiting this habit. I tried to be all professional with it and create a detailed color palette that in the end took too long to make and kept putting off because it was taking too long to finish. Do I regret it? Mmm, kinda. But not really, since I will still continue to do it. Tedious as it might be, seeing those colors next to each other made it easier to visualize and combine. Maybe next time I will try not to be so perfect with them. Oh, but um, I do follow a personal philosophy of using three colors for each part. I select the main color, a lighter version for light hitting it, and a darker one to use as shadows. Of course there will be more colors added later, but those are the core ones. Though, now that I think about it, no color palette was made for the background. However, the same quote-unquote three color theory was applied. Not actually called that, but that is what I'm naming it. A fourth or fifth one is included if there are hard shadows or drastic lighting changes. I love blending, so it helps simplifying everything and give me that absolute joy that pushes me to keep coloring. Honestly, it makes me super biased towards color pencils because the blend and waxiness is so smooth. I love it! <laughs> Next were a couple of sketching days, which were super fun. Once you get over the anxiety of making every sketch perfect, the process becomes simple and straightforward. It leads to start painting faster. Now that took a lot of dedication and practice because holy shenanigans, it was not a one day thing. It took about, I don't know how many years to ingrain it into my brain. So it can be done, but patience is needed. After a sketch is done, I will step back ponder like a philosopher and critique the work standing before me. The purpose of it is not to focus or judge the negatives too harshly, but instead become intrigued by the potential of making it better, be it through change of pose, direction of body, head, or alas, making that till cuter. I will write notes so I can always go back and understand the overall composition, and by doing so, Every sketch and final will look drastically different. It's quite fun, actually. Maybe I will do a shorter video for my index card series. Since all my video footage is lost at the moment, it would just be the sketches and final pieces. Though there are some in-progress pictures. We'll talk about that on a different video. Yes, I know I'm dramatic, but this is just me. Side note. There aren't any videos because they were all on my hard drive before I accidentally deaded my computer. Anyways. Looking back at it, 
It's insane to think that this blue and green dragon came from a few stick figures, some ovals, and what I did not picture, clay. The polymer clay is what gave the body its curves and form, but please don't imagine it being some detailed work of art. Nah, it was just a long tube and a triangle head that was getting bent all over the place. We'll be using this technique in the future as well. Afterwards, the clay back fins were added because I just couldn't mentally visualize the flow or angles correctly. My brain just kept turning sideways with an itch of understanding but unable to draw it. Should I have baked it and kept it as a forever piece to go back and look at? I don't know. Tell me what you think. Oh yeah, I also use it to interpret light and shadows because my goodness, is that my weakness. Okay, one of my weaknesses, along with its counterpart, the shadows. The other one was this demo shed. Many artists will struggle with something at any given point from starting to finishing a painting. But let me tell you, this ocean was intense and aggravating. My goodness, do I have a massive respect for artists that make massive ocean paintings, for they look so simple. But by the gods, it was beyond tedious and frustrating. <laughs> like, I understand how to get some of the basic shapes that give it character. I understand the philosophy but not the execution? Heck no. It felt like the shape was too defined. It was too unreal. If it was not defined enough, what the heck is it then? But a blue of blues. Regardless, I gave it as much detail as I could, not to the point of realism, because that was not the focus. It was meant more for the background, and I had to continuously remind myself of that, to stop defining and bringing the ocean top to the front. I needed it with a slight and readable blur. Even now, there's probably more I could have done or do, but still happy with its current state. Some parts were so much fun to draw in color, like the water gradient. That was extremely satisfying to color. Mm. So, not all of it was frustrating. A painting is all-encompassing and will have the artist feel various emotions throughout the process. And that's beautiful. Now, that inner belly and muscles were my top favorites along with the face. Since I do not have beautiful muscles like that, due to a lack of gym time, which is entirely my fault, I like to give animals and people I draw gorgeous, unrealistic muscles. <laughs> okay, some are not unrealistic, but I give them nice arms and legs because it is what I like, but don't have. Let me live my fantasy! Hashtag no shame. The corals were so pretty to color and Loki wished they had slightly more detail. Maybe one day I will do a close-up of them, but today was not the day. Oh, I also got a chance to use neon pink! It's exciting using any of the neon color pencils because they are so vibrant or they get outdone by other colors, so they rarely get used. Sad face. But guess what? I can change that fact whenever because my paintings do not have to be realistic. Ayy. Side note number two. The different materials used, which I guess should have been added at the beginning, were Prismacolor pencils, Poshka markers, pastels, and Strathmore color pencil paper. I will try a different brand next time. The paper quality is different too, as the other one is thicker meant more for watercolor or oil paints. Trying different mediums is on the agenda, so may give it a try, but I mostly like the texture and thickness. Gosh, I love paper, notebooks, and everything in between. Quite interesting and contradicting when I also love Mother Nature with all its trees and natural biomes. Yet, my hobby includes one that requires the chopping of trees. Hmm. Quite the dilemma. Anyways, tangent aside, let's get to the sadder parts, <laughs> like the lighting. Yes, the lighting is not perfect and probably doesn't make sense, but it's alright. My art doesn't have to be perfect or realistic, even though it is magical when seen from far away. It appears to be a photograph. I do have a bit of talent for that, <laughs> wink wink. Does it apply to this one? Of that, I am unsure. We shall see how the next projects fare. 
It would have helped if I had sculpted the eel to use as a reference for the lighting portion. Thought about it, but chose laziness, so here we are, with a painting that can't read the light source other than the rays of light. Big oofs. But it's okay. Overall, lighting has been my greatest weakness for way too many years. Hopefully, by finally taking my artistic sight seriously, I will start paying more attention to lighting details and give more depth. And being serious in the sense of actually taking time to create art and stop making poor excuses. <laughs> uh, then becoming frustrated with the art piece when it's, it isn't progressing, even after an hour or two working in the same area. Now on the opposite end of how lighting is my weakness, so is darkness. Throughout the years in school and art classes, I would start by coloring or shading the darkest spots first because they're fun. It's what makes me happy. Professor would comment how there weren't enough variations in shade when using extremely dark colors in the beginning. And as a stubborn young lad, I was rebellious and ignored their wise advice. Now knowing that they truly had the best intentions and weren't critiquing to be mean, I realized that they were right and my paintings have changed for the better since then. Yes, I used to take every critique as an attack to my character because I was way too attached to my art, which as youngsters, it is a common feeling to go through. The narcissistic side would have me believe my paintings were amazing and the teachers were wrong because there was nothing that could improve the piece. I now look at those paintings and see how wrong I was. The fear of being wrong has finally receded to acceptable parameters and constructive critiques are welcome. So if you're in a similar stage, just know that you should not take criticism as an attack to your person. Remember, each person will react differently to your art, and that is the beauty of it. Embrace it, but always make sure that you are the one who is truly satisfied by your own art. Take it as an opportunity to grow and transform, and improve the art, your art, to the next level. Okay, now that the tangent is done, <laughs> let's talk about this background... Adding a scenery in itself was a tough choice because it came as an afterthought. I had zero idea how the eel dragon was going to interact with the rest of the ocean. Choosing a color palette to go with the almost finished dragon was a toughie because I was scared of it looking terribly and destroying the piece. Oh, there were various moments when I thought the painting was ruined completely. One instance was when I added the color pastels because it did not interact well with the color pencil. It left this weird texture. It partially blended with the color pencils. What I was hoping for was a semi-translucent layer that would slightly darken the body and make it recede into the background. Thankfully, it was semi-removed by applying a lot of pressure with the color pencils. You see, I do paint landscapes, however, no added components like a person, animal, or machinery is added. It's just a landscape and one medium. If the focus is a person, animal, or object, there is no background added to distract the viewer, unless it was already included in the reference photo. Plan to change this, but it will take a while to master, so this is new territory for me. That's why this painting is so special to me. It is an original creature that used no reference. Just followed my mind's eye as best I could. Not exactly what I envisioned, but proud regardless. The background is another story. I used about five references mashed together because what my brain remembers and how it looks are two very different things. But you know what? It's the best part about drawing. I always get shocked that the painting was made by me. I will look at it. No for a fact I did this painting. But once I step back and really take a look, it becomes hard to believe what I accomplished. Half the time I wonder how I made something so cool. The answer is always trusting the process, but it still baffles me every time.
Looking back at how I was just going to color the eel dragon and nothing else seems very silly of me. It would have been a disservice to me and my skill. The play of blue and green colors is so pretty that I keep falling in love with it the more my eyes wander all around. Even though I could have gone darker, I'm still satisfied because the bright colors are so vibrant and beautiful. It's hard to put into words everything I'm feeling when I look at it. Though a pain at times, it was overall a fun process. Hope you like it as much as I do. If you want to hear the story of how my PC got did it, let me know. Uh, upcoming projects and what I accomplish each week will be posted as a short, no specific day as I am trying to see how long each thing takes me to record and edit. Finding balance is key. But for now, thank you for watching my video and listening to my rant. Don't forget to subscribe and hope you enjoyed it. See ya next project. Bye bye!